Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm finally gonna show you the Rock Crusher that I've been teasing for about five years now on this channel. And it's finally mostly completed. So let's get right into it. So you're all probably familiar with what kind of crusher this is. This is a chain flail crusher, so it's an impact mill. I'll show you the chains on the inside in a minute. But this design here was inspired by uh, a mix of Jeff Williams Rock Crusher if you're familiar with Jeff Williams on YouTube, I've been following him ever since, uh, well, actually, well before I started this channel, as well as a little bit of uh, Dan Hurd. So I took mainly their two rock crushers that they built, kind of took inspiration from that, wrote up some blueprints, and started building this one here. So the drum on this one, I can remember, it's about 10 inches deep and about 17 inches uh, in diameter, which is, I believe, the exact measurements that Jeff Williams used on his rock crusher. So initially, I started building this myself about over five years ago. So I went down to the local junkyard and looked around their scrap. I found a nice piece of steel drum and had them cut it for me. And then I also found some scrap metal plate that was really thick steel and I was gonna make that for the doors. And uh, I used this oxyacetylene torch that we have here in the shop. Started cutting out metal shapes for that. But I needed some precision drilling because I didn't have tools for drilling a hole that was uh, well aligned on both plates, front and back, uh, for the center shaft, as well as a couple other precision uh, welds, as well as some other drilling. And uh, I needed a couple of those things to be done for me. So this just so happened to be during COVID, where a lot of businesses were slowing down uh, due to the economy and world trade also coming to a standstill. So I found a company that makes big machinery and I asked them if they could help me with some of my precision drilling. And not only were they gonna help me, they decided to not use most of the materials that I supplied them with and they gave me some better materials at a really affordable cost. Uh, I guess they were impressed that someone my age at the time in 2020 was e even attempting to build something like this. So they gave me an even better drum here. So this is not the original drum. I actually had a smaller steel. It's still around here. So if I want to build a smaller one, I can, but they supplied me this piece of thick steel as well as these plates here. My original plates were gonna be hexagon shaped. That's the way I cut them with the oxyacetylene torch, but they were able to give me nice precision uh, cuts for this plate here. They welded on the handles and they actually made most of the cart that you see here. Uh, they did make it a lot bigger than I was gonna make it, but uh, can't complain. <laughs> so you, like I said, you're probably all familiar with how these things work. You have an engine, I decide to go with gas because it's versatile and I can take this thing anywhere. And the gas motor drives the belt, which then drives the center shaft, which then spins the chains. And in this particular setup, the chains actually spin counterclockwise, like so, to suck air down into the tube, to then pulverize the rocks, and instead of putting the screen on the bottom, the screen is actually on the side and ejects the material out through here. So. In an ideal situation, this creates a vacuum, so it's also sucking air and blowing air out here. So it pull, as it's pulverizing the rock, once the rock is the right size to go through the screen, it then gets ejected out through the exhaust. So with this particular engine, I picked up a Subaru Robin, which this particular model is now discontinued, and it'll do the job. Though, I'm a little upset because this engine, after running it a couple times, I have ran this machine, and I'll show you some video clips of that. Uh, there seems to be a lot of black fine grain metal bits in my oil. So I'm wondering if my engine is getting ready to blow up. So I'm gonna run this engine until that happens, but I might have to get a replacement at some point already. So uh, I believe the guy I bought this engine from years ago sold me an engine that was on its way out. So I designed this cart and the crusher to be easily movable. So that's why it's like a large wheelbarrow. I got wheels down below. And then of course over here we have the handles and eventually I'm going to get some nice rubber uh, handles for this so it'll be a little bit more comfortable. Uh, the only thing I would change design wise is it's kind of difficult to transport this because of this metal being in the way so you have to take small steps. Uh, had I, if I redo this, which I probably could easily, I will move this bar maybe back here to the center 
so I can take bigger steps without having to worry about hitting my foot there. Now you might notice that the engine actually is sitting quite off the cart here. So I bought this engine plate here to mount the motor. And originally I was gonna have the motor more center in the cart. However, in order for this to spin in the correct direction where it's sucking air, so basically clockwise from the back, counterclockwise from the front, the engine had to be aligned like so. So this put it at the edge of the cart and uh, I had to weld this nice support beam, which also is supporting the engine uh, mount. So that way the higher vibration of this being on the edge of the cart doesn't crack my really poor welds. Uh, I did take welding in high school, but I am no expert at it. <laughs> it does the job good enough. But uh, here on the engine, just out of sight, we have a three inch pulley, go into a five inch pulley with, I believe about a 42 inch belt. And just like Jeff Williams design, the engine is designed to be the tensioner. So when I loosen the four bolts, I can slide the engine back, which then puts tension on the belt and then lock the bolts into place. So uh, one thing I was concerned about was the possibility of a rock jam. And if the center shaft was to jam suddenly, instead of destroying my engine, the, by design, this would hopefully just start burning up the belt. And I can quickly hit the off switch on this motor because it does have an electric kill switch and I can shut it off pretty quickly. So here's a look at the uh, engine again. As you can see, the engine is pretty far off the stand here. But as I said, that is why I have this piece of metal that I welded on myself onto the cart to support the engine here. Uh, again, here's the three inch pulley, which then goes to the five inch pulley on the drive shaft. And eventually I will uh, get some kind of belt guard because the belt does tend to be uh, bouncing around here when I'm crushing rock. It is a little bit dangerous, but uh, maybe just a couple little tack welds uh, and maybe a bolt on little thing. So that way I can just cover this good chunk of the belt as well as this part of the shaft that does stick out quite a bit. So here is the rock inlet and uh, I probably should have added another kink. You see I have the inlet on the back rather than the top. Uh, that way when rocks are being destroyed it doesn't shoot straight back up into your face. But this kink here uh, allows it, so if it does shoot back it at least ends up back in here and then maybe falls back down. However, I probably should have had another kink up top so the inlet was over the top of the tube because rocks still tend to shoot straight up once in a while, little tiny pieces. And having another kink here would just deter that from happening and allow it to fall back in to the chute here. So this is designed to, of course, crush rock. You can see here, I have a bucket full of quartz. And this is pretty hard stuff here. So uh, this stuff, is a bit too big for this crusher. This will wear it out pretty quickly, so I tend to try to get uh, this material into smaller bits. And by design, on the inlet tube, I only have it set to about two and a half inches uh, square there. So it's a square tube, so really big stuff could get jammed in there. So I need to get uh, this rock into smaller material. Whoops. So this is where a jaw crusher would be really nice to have. I do not have a jaw crusher, uh, but uh, that might be something that I try to get in the future because trying to break these hard quartz rocks by hand is a little bit difficult. And also I tend to lose pieces of rock everywhere. So uh, perhaps a rock crusher, a uh, jaw crusher in the future will be something I work on at some point. But for now I got an impact mill. And you can see here that we have the quartz rock with sulfides. So maybe there's some gold in that. That's what this is for. You may have noticed this plate here, and that was to be uh, for an on and off switch if I was to make this electric, because I could still set up an electric motor with this, and uh, I could weld, I have lots of room to weld additional engine mount plates so I could put on an electric motor. And some of those electric motors, you can manipulate which way they spin. So that would actually make this set up a lot easier than having a giant gas motor on the edge of my cart. <laughs> Luckily, uh, with the motor off, the plate and the bracket are actually just as wide as the wheels, so it actually doesn't really impede uh, over the edge of the cart too much. So the wheels are actually the widest part of the cart still. But let's show you the inside of the drum now. So the drum is just held on by these four nuts. And one thing that's also on the cart that they added uh, are these little studs. So you can hang the door easily on the side of the cart. 
I will say that with the higher vibration with this thing running, that these nuts tend to just unscrew themselves. Uh, not the ones on the door. If you get them tight enough, it's not much of an issue. But let's open this thing up now. There we go. And then the door just hangs like so. All right, so here we have the inside of the impact mill. So you can see where the rocks then come down and this then spins the chains around and then shoots them out through the side screen here. So a uh, couple of things going on here. So the chains that I selected, I made sure they were nice hardened steel chains. As you can tell, I've ran this through. So this only has wear on mainly one side, but uh, through the amount that I've ran it, it seems to be holding up quite well with the hardest chains that I could find. Uh, I have the chains connected with these little uh, joints here. I can't think of the name of this part, but uh, I've seen other people, and this would probably be a better setup, where they got the uh, chained ends that then unscrew and screw on. Uh, so it looks like a piece of chain, but it has a joint with a opening screw. And that might, might have been better for this type of shaft. As you can see, the shaft is super overbuilt, very heavy duty. There's a lot of other holes here, so there's a lot of room for modification. And maybe in the future, instead of running chains, I believe I should be able to run hammers. And hammers would probably be a lot better uh, than chains. Now there are a couple things here with the design um, that I would change. Now, I gave the guys some blueprints that helped me build this machine. And some of the stuff on the blueprints I messed up, so there was some mistakes I made on the blueprints, but then there was some stuff that they did. One of the things that I asked for was a small impact uh, plate. So a lot of people, they just tend to weld a bead either on the bottom or on the sides. So what they've done is they welded this massive hunk of metal bar on the side here. Uh, so I had to remove that and you can see where my angle grinding actually uh, cut some deep grooves into the drum there. Um, and then there's this piece here I haven't fully been able to remove yet because my angle grinder uh, is having a hard time getting in there. Um, so this is something I need to remove at some point because as this thing spins around, this is acting like a little barrier and it's actually capturing a lot of powder in the back here. So I need to get the rest of this little bar out. And then if I really want to, I could fill in this gap that I've created in the metal with a metal bead and I can weld in a couple uh, little rivets here or not rivets, but uh, little beads on the side for impact. Now for the filtration screen. So originally I had told uh, them that I wanted some very fine holes drilled right into the uh, shaft itself, uh, the drum. So basically holes like these, these screw holes that they've added. Uh, I wanted something like that, though a little bit smaller. So it's basically going to be a built-in filtration screen right in the side of the drum, so that way I would not have the need to replace screens. Now having screens does allow uh, for some modifications depending on what material you're running through because um, maybe depending on the material, especially if you're running it wet, smaller screen holes may plug up the machine. So uh, being able to swap out uh, the actual screen material with bigger holes might be beneficial. So what they did was they cut this giant hole in the side of the drum and they gave me uh, this setup here. So these basically bolt right on into place. So it's basically like a little clamp that then clamps the spring, uh, the filter material, the screen material right on the side of the drum. The problem with that is now you have bolts that are sticking up and well, the chains are going to absolutely destroy the top of the bolts and it's going to uh, be impossible to remove said bolts or it's just going to break this free and you're gonna have a screen tumbling around inside your crusher. So, not ideal. I haven't found really a good way around this, so I kind of have this little bit of a cheesy setup. So I cut a new screen, and what I've done is, is I've hammered it into place. There's a bit of a gap up here, so I've used that as a kind of a tension, and uh, I basically hammered this in and used punches to bend the teeth against the metal drum here. And basically, this is only held in by uh, tension. So uh, if a rock hits this hard enough, it could blast it out. And uh, the first time I actually ran this, well, that's exactly what happened. So I made it better and put it in there um, a little bit stronger. Now, if I really wanted to, I could probably tack weld 
a bead there, a bead there, maybe four corners, a uh, little tack welds, and that would hold it in really well. And then that way, if I need to remove it, I could just cut those tack welds and yank it out of there. So um, this works for now, not the most ideal situation, but eventually I would like to come up with a better screen system. So when this thing's on, this does create a lot of dust. And to get around that, I've made this cardboard cutout gasket, which significantly reduces the amount of dust getting through the door. Now I've seen a lot of people use adhesive material, but that tends to wrinkle up because it's not a cylinder. So I figured cutting a gasket like this out of cardboard would be cheap, effective way to do it. And it actually holds up pretty well. There are a couple areas where it does shoot dust out still, or it does trap a bit of material. As you can see, if I hit the cardboard here, there is a bit of sandy material that falls out. So um, maybe in the future, I can replace this with some kind of rubber sheet. Uh, if I could find a slab of rubber, I can cut the rubber out into the shape of this drum like so, and we'll have a rubber gasket rather than cardboard, but cardboard is better than no gasket. So that's what I have here. Speaking of dust, all the exhaust then comes through this bit here. And I just found some drier duct material that was just lying around and clamped it right on to the end there for the nozzle. And then the end of this tube then can go into a five gallon bucket, which also makes a lot of dust. So uh, in the future, I would like to keep that dust down because well, one, it's silica dust and you don't want to be breathing that. So I uh, definitely have to wear a mask or a respirator when you're running this machine. And not only that, all that silica dust is probably not good for the engine, even though this has a air filter, the air filter on this thing uh, isn't much of an air filter in my opinion for this little engine, but that's all it can take. So uh, keeping the dust away from any kind of motors or turning equipment would probably also be good to prevent wear and tear on the whole motorized machine. And there's what the end of the nozzle looks like. So since this is a big dryer vent, I have to bring it all the way up here, but this is designed to take on a bigger hose. So if I got some kind of plastic tubing, it can easily clamp on to the end here with a clamp, and then I can run that hose uh, just about anywhere I want. But for now, uh, just to have this machine up and running for testing, this is what I've elected to do with it. All right, so this is the Rock Crusher. Uh, I have some clips of it running. So if you wanna see those clips, you can check that out right up here in the corner and it'll be a whole nother video showing this thing in operation. So this is the Rock Crusher. It's not perfect, but it definitely gets the job done. One thing I am concerned about with running this thing in the future is the small amount that I have ran it. You can see these little wear grooves right where the chains are going all the way around. So uh, this will eventually wear out the drum. So I can either weld on the drum to fix that. Perhaps the chains are actually rubbing on the drum. It's hard to tell but perhaps hammers would be a better way to go with this. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. This is the Rock Crusher. Perhaps we'll give it a name. Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed this video. And until next time, I'll see you all later.